in a world where there is so much trash in crypto, who will find the next crypto gem? Today, we have Jet from Hourglass uh, here to hopefully help us answer that question along with a, a fantastic team of experts here. Well, Jet, welcome to the studio. Hey, welcome. It's awesome to be here, especially on such a great day for, for blockchain and everyone in our space. It's a beautiful day indeed. Uh, again, this is being filmed hot off of the announcement that Ripple has been declared uh, not a security by a U.S. judge. So we're all in high spirits right now. Crypto is, uh, you know, the interest is coming and Europe just passed the first Bitcoin ETF. So there's no better time uh, to be in the market right now. Dude, I'm ready to jump out of my chair and go pop some champagne bottles because this is how actually me and Lucas first met was when XRP first or Ripple got the lawsuit back in the what was that late 2020 uh so this is just like a good moment lucas has to uninstall his tiktok we yeah, get to have dude. fun uh, uh i'm known for <laughs> hating on feel? xrp yeah. look, look i've always wanted them to win a lawsuit <laughs> but you know it's a win for everybody in the space i've always said they should win or settle i'm just having it's not great because i just made a live stream about why i don't like them yesterday so <laughs> oh well we're gonna eat, eat some crow today but um you know they, they may be a gem to some people uh but not a gem to others but uh what can you tell us about the gems on the show and what can you what can you share us about the show well uh we recently announced that uh we have a premiere date it's going to be september 7th the next crypto gem will um, premiere widely across uh, 178 uh, different platforms, uh, over 56 countries, over 12 languages. Wow. And uh, yeah, this is the first crypto reality show um, that's competitive and that is going to be on mainstream TV all over. Um, some of our distribution partners include Amazon Prime, Amazon Freebie, Samsung TV, Pluto, uh, which is part of Paramount, um, uh, Vizio, DirecTV, Primetime here in the U.S., uh, LG, just to name a few. We're going to be all over. And uh, really, really excited. We have an amazing cast. Uh, the judges of our show are Brian D. Evans, uh, who's also one of our senior advisors at Hourglass, as well as George Tung. Cryptos are us. Yeah, guess, shout yeah, out George, the homie. Right? The one who put us together. Uh, love George. We were all George. Uh, Leah Helper, and I love Leah as well as her brother uh, Gideon. They're amazing people, um, and she's fantastic on the show. I mean, uh, you guys are going to see the stars born. And <laughs> in, yeah, you want to talk about a firecracker performance? I'm excited to see what no, Leah has in store. And and for those of you who haven't seen the trailer, we're going to run that right now so you can get an idea of what we're talking about. Watch each week as these teams compete in complex challenges to see who has what it takes to be crowned the next crypto gem. To decide on their fate, let's meet our expert judges. Okay. So, what are we thinking? We cannot go with team two. No? Well, there's entirely centralized. Well, which team well, do, you, do you want to go with? I think team three is perfect. I love the decentralization. I love the fact that they actually offer value and they actually want to help build the community. Team two, they could dump on the market easily. But they're building utility. It's not there. A little bit centralized, but I definitely think they're much better than, say, team three or team four. Passion matters. Passion okay. doesn't matter because it's about being trustless. We don't want to have to trust that they're not going to dump on their followers dump on the community. You still want to see passionate leaders that really believe in their project. But you don't want to trust these passionate leaders. We want to, you might as well trust the banks then. I mean, you're right. We, we don't want centralization. So we going for that, I, then? We're not, I, we're not. Like it's a tough decision. No, I mean, no, they're, no, they're, 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 they're not centralized. They're not going to dump by anyone. <laughs> and with the power of editing, we're back. Uh, now, you know, this has been in the works for a while. A lot of people on Twitter are hyped. Uh, but I feel like most people know the name of the show and, and not as many know about Hourglass. And when mm -hmm. I figured out, because it was, that, you know, I had heard the show. Uh, and then when George introduced us, I was like, wow, you guys are building something really amazing here. What can you, what can you, you know, tell someone who's heard the name of the show, but maybe doesn't know the people behind it? Absolutely. So Hourglass is the crypto project, uh, the, collect the Hourglass Collective that is behind the show. And uh, Hourglass is a decentralized crypto that is 100% circulating. The ownership renounced. 
and yeah can we get a round of applause by the way like let's just accept that let's go like like we get a lot of projects on the show who say hey we're completely decentralized (laughs) but we are 90 percent by the the way we're about to distribute (laughs) uh and dilute the supply 90 percent in the next four years yeah yeah Um, so so really community owned here i just you know i wanted to highlight that before we got into it because a lot of people hear those words and check out because they've been used so many times yeah, yeah, the proof is in the pudding. They're they're literally 100% circulating and we did it that way on purpose because before I got into leading a crypto community, I was a crypto investor myself for 6 years. So I've seen what I don't like and one of the things that I don't like is when there's a ton of uncirculating supply when some entities are just dumping on token holders in order to, you know, fund initiatives and you can go into this debt spiral of dilution, right? So we wanted something to do something that's the opposite. So what we did was that I brought in an incredible entrepreneur. I mean, one of the most successful people to ever come into the space outside of crypto to be our chairman, Jeff Mahoney. And um, he is a multi-billionaire. He runs the company. He's the owner of the company called Save Daily that has 7,000 institutional clients. He owns over 20 other companies, including the Neft Vodka brand, um, and a, a massive events brand, live wrestling promotion, huh. celebrity That's podcasts, cool. <laughs> multiple apps. It goes on and on and on. And so Jeff and I, we decided what can we do for the blockchain space with Hourglass And there's lots of things in the works. If you go to our website, hourglassx.com, you can see we're an incubator and we have lots of projects that are going to use the hourglass weight token. But the first thing we wanted to do was because he, one of the companies he owns is a TV production studio that puts out lots of shows on mainstream TV everywhere. And uh, I was like, we have to do a crypto TV show. And that's what the next crypto gem is. We started working on it, um, around uh i think it was around october of last year or so and uh we finished filming a couple months ago now it's fully edited ready to go in september 7th it premieres everywhere one episode will air per week for six weeks the final week will be a double episode with a um with a kind of like a post show wrap up at the end uh, as the second show yeah, and hopefully startups actually watch this because I want to jump off a question uh, talking about kind of the 100% in circulation. This is a huge yeah. thing, and I don't think people realize how strong of an impact that is going to have on the community in the long term. Uh, how as our, like Hourglass, Hourglass Collective, I'm here, double hearing my audio, so trying mm-hmm. not to stutter over my own words, but how have you guys you know, been able to release 100% of that supply? Because now I know there's going to be people coming on your show sweating a little bit because they're going to have 95% in their treasury. Uh, (laughs) And ultimately, you guys still gain the partnerships, the connections, the advisors, and you guys still obviously have an outlook on profitability. So how were you able to do that? And what was the motivation behind releasing the 100% into circulation on top of obviously your investment experience? That's a fantastic question. So, So first of all, we didn't launch the Hourglass token. We built a community around it. So an anonymous developer uh, back in last August launched the token and we had a community and we decided to adopt this token and build use case around it. The way that we're able to do this is that, first of all, we have community leaders that are already financially successful. So that's a big part of it, right? Um, I mean, as I mentioned, Jeff is incredibly successful. He doesn't need to dump some tokens to yeah. you know, on the TV show. That's the last thing that he needs in the world, right? Um but what's what's beautiful about our incubator model is that if you look at the TV show, right, and then you look at um, our other projects, like there's Alpha District, which is, which is a Web3 gaming verse that was created by some of the best people in AAA gaming who worked on um, like Assassin's Creed, Detroit Becomes Human, um, Clash of Clans. They also w- worked on film projects like The Mandalorian, Star Wars, Star Trek. All of these wow. projects are meant to be are built to be profitable in the regular world as a, in terms of regular dollars as well. So there are businesses that make money like the show where we already know we're going to make much, much more than me and Jeff invested in to, to create the show from all the ad revenue, from all the deals that we made it for distribution. And it's going to put a lot of attention on our glass. Same thing with the video game. So basically what we've done is we've created a model where we're creating use cases for the token because that's what we want, true utility. We're going to launch our third um, incubated 
project, um, or actually we have over half a dozen in the pipeline, but we're going to reveal wow. the third um, uh, right here on the show later <laughs> <laughs> this month. We're going to nice. reveal the third. And then all of these projects, they have different teams behind them, really good people, their own advisory boards, their own, uh, their own budgets and everything. And they're all meant to be businesses that succeed on their own, but then they also use our token. So we think this is a really unique model. The whole idea is that we're putting the token holders first this way. We're take, our community members are taking the risk of funding these, these incubated projects and they're, they're set. We're 100% circulating. So that's what it's, we're doing. And what a crazy idea that businesses should be profitable. I've you know, yeah, right. Right. like, yeah. like I feel like this, we see this over and over in the crypto ecosystem where, okay, project A gets funded. Uh, project A then sells out useless NFTs. Project A then dumps the token. Project A continues to dilute themselves further through further launches. And it just, you know, whether it's a DAO or it's like a traditional project, uh, they string along until the treasury is empty and then they right. just kind of move on. Um, so, you know, when I first, when I first, you know, took a look when we, when we met, uh, you know, a month ago or so, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little bit more, um, you know, I really looked at, at the tokenomics. I looked at where you guys were, were hoping to, to put this and I looked at some of the people behind it. And, um, you know, I think that you guys have the potential here to really kind of set the standard for what a, what a collective or a DAO looks like, you know? Um, I mean, what has that process been like, like for you? Cause I know when I speak to a lot of, you know, uh, DAO members, there can be, you know, issues with control or people, you know, there's no clear vision. How do you maintain having that decentralized community, but also leading hourglass? You're not going to believe this, but th there's been almost nothing easier than keeping our community together. We have just some of, I'm, we're just blessed to have some of the best people in our community. Like if you go on Twitter and you just look at any of our, our posts and, and I mean, there's 50 plus people that chose to make an hourglass, their avatar and part of their, you know, social media identity because they like what we're doing. And I think part of it is because what we're doing is so fun. You know, I mean, we're putting crypto on, on TV in a competitive format. We have a game called Alpha District, which is going to be this incredible, uh, you know, verse and, and with a ton of mini games and NFT integration that's set in the in the future. And everybody loves it. And so I think that it, it's been incredibly easy, mostly because people like what we're doing. So they stay behind us. They know our vision. They know the people behind it. I'm very transparent with everyone. So I'm always keeping everyone updated as to what's going on. Um, it doesn't mean that there aren't times where we've had issues. Everyone has issues. There's, you know, you, you never know, like things can happen. You get nowadays in one of your tweets or whatever, but it is what it is. I think smart people know the, the difference between real building and just ridiculous, you know, FUD and all that. So yeah. overall, I would say that it couldn't really be um, nothing could be uh, going smoother than, than what we're doing. And I'm just really excited because I think a lot of the hard parts have been, are done. I think when we first said we're going to produce a TV show, there was a lot of skepticism because, mm. you know, crypto, there's so many promises are made and then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some and it's so like mainstream, delivered. right? It's so yeah. like, like who, 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 you know, who's going to make a TV show about crypto? You know, it's like, yeah. I think one of the biggest utilities to this show is going to be the fact that when we're at Thanksgiving and our parents are asking, you know, how's crypto going? You can finally show them something in the real world that's on television and mainstream. And they're going to be like, oh, there's actually, there's something to this crypto industry. I think we've all dealt with that in the past. Uh, but I think you're going to finish off saying one thing before we have the next question for you. Yeah, yeah, no, actually, that what you said is actually 100% right. And that's actually a big part of our show. We, we had the choice whether we could create something with kind of a narrow appeal, just for people who already understand crypto, but we decided that wouldn't be as big of a game changer as really bringing crypto to the mainstream. So everything about our show is designed so someone who even has no crypto experience maybe just heard of bitcoin and knows nothing we'll still find the show very enjoyable fun to watch and educational as well so i kind of give the example all the time like i love watching survival shows and i love watching like physical competition shows <laughs> so 
you know, wipe out, but, but, yeah, but yeah, you're never yeah, going to yeah. do it, right? You're like, but I know how to survive. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you learn stuff. Like, you're watching it, and now, like, I, I've seen them make fire so many times that, you know, that I know how that's done. <laughs> I know how to build a shelter. There's the A-frame. There's the pitch shelter. You know, there's all – and you learn that from watching it. So that's what I'm hoping is that we're going to get all these mainstream viewers. 98% of our viewers are will never have heard of crypto. They're going to be watching the next Crypto Gem get really into the the characters, the suspense as to who's who's moving forward, who's going home, all that, right? And then they're going to be learning too. And we we made it a point to to basically tilt the show towards those people. So there may be times where us in crypto are going to be like, hey, I already know that, right? But you got to understand 98% of these people who are watching the show have not heard of that. And yeah, um, yeah I'm really excited. We're, we're going to be doing season two, bigger and better. Uh, hope to get you you two guys involved in in season two, and um, real excited Dude, about I, that. As well. We're excited. Look, this this face was made for television, man. Come on, <laughs> now. come on now. We got the 100%. hair. We have the dark eyes. That's true. Crypto DJ. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How got, do you know he's got experience? He's got yeah. deep bags under the eyes, and his hair turned gray from the crypto market for real, man. Winter. Uh, I, that kind of leads into the next question, though, here with how you're choosing entrepreneurs and the experts that are going to be the judges on this show. Because yes. as people are coming in and watching crypto for the first time, uh, whether they're an entrepreneur from the crypto sector or, uh, like you mentioned, an advisor tr from the traditional trade fi world, how are you guys approaching these entrepreneurs to become judges on that show? And what separates them from a lot of the other ex er, experts in the, the industry. Well, let me preface this by saying, please tell me you got like one really, really stinker, like a, like a terrible project. Like these guys, like, like clearly have like a, basically a rug pull. Please tell me there's at least one of those. I want to see, I want to see them get just torn open. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's talk about the judges. Then we'll talk about the contestants. So there's three judges and I think we have a fantastic mix and a really good dynamic. One of them is Brian D Evans. He's an Inc. Uh, 500 entrepreneur. He was recently ranked by Forbes as one of the top 10 people in crypto um, in 2023 to be, you know, to be a game changer and be aware of. And he's he's made over 300 Web3 investments uh, as a VC. So this is someone who is coming from kind of a uh, the standpoint of an entrepreneur and an a early stage investor. Right. Uh, we also have George Cryptos R Us, George Tung. So he, everyone knows he has yeah. one of the popular crypto YouTube channels. I mean, he he loves Bitcoin, but he's also analyzed literally hundreds, if not thousands, of altcoins. And um, he he's such very, a smart, like genuine guy. Like I love like George. When, when I met George in Miami, you know, he he was just as warm and friendly as he was when we met, and you know, he's invited me to all of his events. So. Shout out George, man. I know we got we got to we got to come link with him, bro. I know I was mad because uh, we were actually supposed to show up. A little funny story because I got to meet him at Bitcoin Miami too while we were doing interviews. Mm. Uh, but we were supposed to go to this cool after party with everybody as well after the uh, the convention. And this man, if you've ever met him, he uh, refuses to wear closed closed source shoes. Like yeah, it's I, all open toe flip and, flops and flip flops and, and flip flops and shorts. It's and a shorts. Short time. Wear pants. I have been to the finest restaurants in New York City, in Admittedly, they're closed toe shoes, but I was wearing, you know, the same shorts I have on right now that go they cut off at the knee. <laughs> but so they, I've been to some I've been to some real places with with these shorts. But. Either way, the the restaurant or wherever they were hosting the event was like, no, 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 you're not coming in. No, so, they were they were mad, dude. It was funny. You oh, know what? Time. We weren't in contact then. I swear, because uh, we knew that uh, we know the the venue. You know how they are with with yeah. these. You just gotta know somebody if, usually. If, you know, if you had just told me, I would have been like, "Look, we're freaking running an event. Let them in." So <laughs> next time if that ever happens again in an event that we're involved with, just just contact me. We'll. we'll oh, I'm making them bring an extra pair of shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, it, both. We'll do both. <laughs> which is funny because the one who has an extra pair of shoes in my car right now is Josh. Yeah, that's that is funny. Yeah, actually. which God damn it, get those out of my car. They've been there since like Miami, literally. <laughs> um, yeah, taking up space, but. Yeah. So okay. All right. So we got we got we have George. We have Brian. We have George. Too. Brian. Yeah, I got lost. Super cool dude. By the way, George just has an event this month in Vegas. I know he invited me. Too. Yeah. So no excuse, man. You should try dude. to go. <laughs> I mean, we don't have to go to Rare Evo now. Yeah, that's so. true. Those guys. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm down to go. I'm down to go, man. Look, I have six hundred dollars yeah. in flight credit. <laughs> Right on, man. So, uh, yeah, George. Uh, and then the last one is Leah Helper. Mm -hmm. And she's very, very interesting because we 
she's a bit of more of a Bitcoin maxi. So she's very skeptical of altcoins, right? And she also has kind of this ethos around her that she specifically believes that projects should be, she's kind of a decentralization maxi too, right? She wants to trust in the code, not in the people and everything. So you're getting three completely different takes on every project. They're all looking for something different. And you can see, um, you know what? You can play one of the clips where they're arguing and you can see how the three of them have a very different point of view. On- I'll throw that up right now. Three, two, one, shaboom. Okay, so what are we thinking? We cannot go with team two. No? Well, there's entirely centralized. Well, which team well, do, you, do you want to go with? I think team three is perfect. I love the decentralization. I love the fact that they actually offer value and they actually want to help build the community. Team two, they could dump on the market easily. But they're building utility. It's not there. A little bit centralized, but I definitely think they're much better than, say, team three or team four. Passion matters. Passion okay. doesn't matter because it's about being trusted. Trustless. We don't want to have to trust that they're not going to dump on their followers, dump on the community. You still want to see passionate leaders that really believe in their project. But you don't want to trust these passionate leaders. We want to, you might as well trust the banks then. I mean, you're right. We, we don't want centralization. So why are we going for them then? I, we're not. I mean, we're not. Like it's a tough decision. No, I mean, no, I think no, they're not centralized. Yeah, they're yeah, not going to dump on anyone. <laughs> Shaboom, we're back. Power of editing. <laughs> <laughs> it got testy. And, um, you know, there are other times that they agreed and uh, that that was powerful, too, because if all three of them agree on something as uh, uh, then it means that it's you know, there's multiple angles on that on that conflict and a clear conclusion. So you got you get a mix. I think it's really, really interesting. And so I couldn't be happier with the three judges. I'm friends with the three judges in real life. Uh, the judges are all part of the Hourglass Collective now. Brian and George are two of our uh, senior advisors. And then Leah and her brother um, Gideon Halpern are media partners to the Hourglass Collective. So, I mean, it went so well. Originally, our relationship was just their cast members of our show, but they wanted to be involved more in everything that we're doing. Uh, George is also, and, and Brian are both advisors on Alpha Districts and, and these other incubated projects that we're, um, we're rolling out. The next one, their advisors on that as well. So that's, that's super a great dumb, cast right there. I mean, Layer himself is always defending Bitcoin at these conferences, whether it's against uh, gold, you know, gold maxis right, or gold right, bugs. Right. Uh, yeah. So that's that's going to be interesting because you need that you need that, you know, diversification of just having yes. the different opinions, you know, just kind of like similar to Shark Tank, where you need to have that. Hey, you're actually wrong in this scenario. And I don't believe it for this reason. And it integrates a lot more emotion to the crowd and the viewers watching, too. Uh, makes it very very excited, which is why I think you want to see maybe a rug pull or two go yeah. on the show and get completely obliterated. There's some I'll people that, in terms of the contestants, some of them that are on the show are that in the first episode uh, have gone on to things quite a bit. And then there are ones that don't really exist anymore. I don't think, you know, the rug pull, which is the literal pulling of liquidity and all that. I don't know about that, but you know, there, there's been a big difference in the trajectory uh, from from the show on, so you, there is that diversity that you guys yeah. are hoping to see. <laughs> there, it's not all top one hundred projects, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's not all shit projects either. You know, you, there's a mix. There's a really good mix. So, dude, that's dope. I can't wait to watch. And uh, what date is the premiere? You said September seventh. September seventh. Yep. September seventh, dude. I'm gonna be uh, very very much watching this the second it we'll drops. Have to do a co live or something. Yeah, do we'll do a reaction released. stream after it's done. Um, yeah, dude, are you uh, are you planning are you planning to uh, you know essentially have any any special guests, any special appearances, some people that we may maybe you know don't know or are, are going to be there? Yes or no? I just I'm prepping I'll myself. Know itself? Yeah, yeah, you don't have to name names. Well, well I can name um, uh, Kevin Harrington, who was one of the original sharks of Shark Tank, makes a guest appearance, um, as does uh, Ben Bitboy. Um, Armstrong, that's that's public. <laughs> yeah, so, I remember uh, that. I think he yeah. was uh, down there in Miami the same time we were. Tom Dwan, yeah. the professional poker player who just won the biggest live pot on TV. He won a $3 million pot. He, he is a guest star on our show as well. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Sessa's, Sessa's pants invest. just got wet. Oh my god! <laughs> Bringing the right investors in—that's awesome. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, so actually, a little bit about that then. Our, from from the judges and their standpoint. Mm-hmm. Can you explain a little bit of how the show actually works? Are these judges actually investing in projects themselves or are they rating them on kind of a green light, red light uh, scenario and they should pass it to the next round? 
What should the viewers expect from these judges going into the whole season? That's a good question. And um, uh, because we didn't want to give out the whole format, I've been a little bit evasive on this. But now, mm -hmm. that, now that we announced the release date, I'm going to start be giving more hints. So in the first, our, our show is actually quite a bit different than just like a Shark Tank format. First, they, we, the judges kind of narrow down who they want as the key four competitors who are invited to Los Angeles. And then those four competitors go through a series of challenges that we don't, that, that you'll see what happens. We can't give away what those are, but they're tested in all sorts of different ways that they don't expect. So there, it, it's not just like you're just sitting in front of the judges and you're pitching your project. It, it's a, it's very, very different from that. They, they're, they're, they're getting put through the gauntlet. <laughs> and then each, each week is a completely different challenge and a different theme. And, uh, and at the end, we'll see who can survive and be the next crypto gem. And so that's the, the basic idea. It's not, um, uh, it's not just Shark Tank with but now crypto projects. Yeah, I'm now starting to understand the uh, survival shows that you watched. You know, you kind of <laughs> sounding a little bit similar. <laughs> Dude, yeah, who can go longer? Who can go the longest without shit posting on Twitter? No, but um, <laughs> have you considered launching a sister show, World's Next Crypto Scam, where they have to compete through a series of challenges like like who can pull the liquidity fastest, who can oh, hire the man. most, uh, who can who can get the most undisclosed influencer shills, uh, who can who can distribute the tokens quickly, quickly you know, the fastest, like you know that kind of shit. That'd be hilarious. Oh man. man. I like got a little parody, parody episode. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the parody, dude, we have the perfect guys. We have the perfect uh, judge trio. We'll have Richard Hart, uh, Matt Lorian, and uh, <laughs> fucking. Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll have Sam Bateman Fried phone in from prison. Special guest appearance: Do Kwan and his cellmate. You have to, you have <laughs> to have an ankle bracelet. Come in at the end and just take them all. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and everyone, everyone gets arrested. Oh my, oh my god, dude! Well, let's let's talk a little bit about the uh, the vision that you have for uh, the TV series itself. Sure. Uh, you obviously have a lot of different incubator projects that we can get into in a little bit, but for the TV show itself, you're already planning on a season two, oh, season yeah. three, etc. What is that vision uh, as you approach your guys' first launch? Yeah, uh, we we want to get. Um, we already know. So first of all, our key distributor, Insight TV. They're um, one of they're they're the ones that are putting together all these platforms that we're going to be on, and they're amazing. They're they're kind of Gen Z focused. They have um, offices all over the world, and th they've already said that there's more buzz behind this than than anything else they're doing. They're really excited. They've already said we're definitely doing season two and beyond, and giving us the green light. Uh, we're definitely going to go bigger and better. So I think that a lot of shows, like if you look at the first season of American Idol, the first season of The Apprentice, usually a lot of shows, I just watched actually the, um, the Netflix documentary of the, the story of American Gladiators. It's freaking amazing. I have and, watched that. Um, Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. You guys got a big recommendation on that. First seasons tend to get the basic idea of Cross, but then what happens is it, you get all this feedback as this really worked this didn't work. This part was amazing. This part was a little wonky. Let's let's do this way, way better by by basically doing more of what worked and doing less of what didn't work. Right. And that's exactly what we're going to do for season two. We already know we're going to have 10 times as many applicants. I mean, just people we haven't officially opened up the applicants for season two. But even people who have just come to us and say that when you're ready, we want to be it. That's more than people that applied for season season one. Um, and we also have connections now with like folks that are tied into like 30, 50 projects because they're a VC or they're a consultant. And they're like, mm -hmm. I would like all of these projects I know to be considered. So we're going to have an, a ridiculous pool to choose from in season two. And then we're going to have the, the feedback as to what really worked on season one and be able to make adjustments. I think we're going to have a bigger, we're going to have a bigger studio, obviously. And I think we're going to start with more teams and have more episodes and uh that that's the idea just just keep on keep on building well you know when you when it comes time to build your bigger studio my advice is don't hire a traveling gypsy who oh. does shrooms and then goes whitewater fun. rafting when he's hired to build a desk and then steals your tv fun fact i built what you're looking at right here oh no uh, way yeah that's why it's, it's so, so shoddy <laughs> and, and i totally moved out from california to like launch a media company with this guy and the guys we hired just 
we're doing exactly what he says. So I'm up here with like a table saw cutting all the pieces. And uh, to be like, fair, Josh did an excellent job. You know, he's not. <laughs> let me show you this. The way that this is held up, there's a tissue paper on a two by four. Don't. <laughs> Uh, well, it's, it's, so there, there are three prong setups and then the table behind us right here where this, this custom PC is sitting, um, it's supposed to bolt to it as well, but we have to get behind there. So there's one right. piece that we had, a, it's a little wonky, but oh. you know, for not being a carpenter, I think it turned out a okay. You know, oh, now I a piece of wood to want to go back in there. <laughs> All right. So there. let's, uh, well, let's do what we're good at and let's start breaking down a little bit of, uh, the projects utility obviously got the TV right. show coming in for the token and, and the hourglass collective itself mm -hmm. uh, but for your community members and just for people watching how does that value interpret into the ecosystem and back to the the holders and the decentralized community that exists with the DAO? absolutely so so basically the the only, every single project we do the goal is to promote and to utilize the weight token the only possible exception to that was that for the first season of the TV show, because what we didn't want to create this friction where it's like you need the token to watch the show or something, because then what's going to happen is that instead of reaching millions and millions of people, it's only going to reach a very small number of people. And that goes against our, our basic idea of, of wanting to bring in mainstream adoption. So for the first um, season, we don't have specific extremely specific token integration to the show yet but we're building that into season two and beyond and we have a very specific partner we're talking to that we're going to announce who's a big player in hollywood and understands web3 really well and uh so we'll be having integration with the token uh from season two and beyond and we might do some smaller thing for season one but it won't be like it won't be required to watch the show or anything like that maybe for like special features or something uh, everything else in the ecosystem basically is, is a crypto project where the weight token is the exclusive primary, uh, is the exclusive token of the project. So Alpha District, it is a video game in verse. This is something we revealed. We've showed the trailer and it's kind of like a mix of Blade Runner. And, um, and uh, I, I like to think of it as uh, Blade Runner kind of meets Black Mirror <laughs> okay. and uh, really, really cool futuristic uh, verse. And the entire verse is going to be um, basically using the weight token as the exclusive in-game currency for everything. So I think that's pretty self-explanatory yeah. in, in that one. Uh, we have another project that we're going to be announcing this month, which is really, really cool. I'll give the first hint. I've never given a hint, but we... Oh. But <laughs> we put clip it, clip code, it. <laughs> <laughs> we put on the website code name project Gigawatt. Okay, so th this is kind of like a Web three version of a project that there's a Web two version that's that sold for over half a billion dollars. There's something to do with stories, something to do with connecting people with stories, and uh, there's going to be an immediate announcement on how the Hourglass Weight Token works. Um, there's a, there's a mechanism where you can, if you want to lock this amount, you get this, if you want to lock this amount, you get this, if you want to lock this amount, you get this. And there's from, that's coming from two different sides because the app caters to, um, both businesses and, and retail. And so, you know, there's going to be very obvious token utility there. And then what I'm really, really excited about is when I brought in Jeff Mahoney into the Hourglass Collective as the chairman he already owned all these successful web two is and retail businesses and brands. So i literally work out of the Neft office in El Segundo, uh, one block from here. I came back here cause it's a little bit quieter right now. It's kind of nutty there. So I didn't want to <laughs> all that, all that sound to be in our interview, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there that's it. That's he had, he's an incubator. So there is a dating app that is doing really, really well, growing incredibly fast. We're going to be doing token integration into that. It's going to be the exclusive token of the dating app. There is a money transfer app. He spent millions and millions of dollars to get the bank licenses, to get um, the approvals needed by the governments uh, required that's going to be launching. And we're going to be doing integration into that as well. So many projects um, it, that, that are already successful in the regular world and making money. So we don't need to dump tokens on anybody. They're, these are already well-funded, doing well, have their own teams. We're adding utility by uh, using the weight token. 
So um, all these things are going to happen. It's not going to be a fast project. We're going to roll out in terms of revealing, maybe like reveal one every month or two months. And But we're working behind the scenes on all of them. And that way it keeps people in suspense, keeps it fun. And uh, it, it doesn't, if I, if I, if we just put out everything we were doing, it would be too overwhelming. And then there would be too many questions when this, when this, when this, when this. So that's why we're kind of rolling things out one at a time, but we're basically creating an entire incubated uh, ecosystem of incubated projects that are successful projects in the real world that have teams that make money and then utilize our, the weight token as well. That's sick, man. You know, I think, you guys are building some cool stuff. Where can where can people find your uh, your links at, man? Where can where can they yeah. where can they go to get more information about this? And of course, the next crypto gem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our website is hourglassx.com. Uh, you can also go to hourglassalpha.com, and it forwards to a link tree with kind of the best links about our project and start there. You can also go to our, our Twitter account, our at hourglass underscore wait. And uh, my Twitter is at ultra starter. If you, if you go there, join our disc, there's all links to join our telegram, join our discord community. You're not going to find a better group. Uh, I love our community so much They're They've been behind what we've been doing the whole time. They're always supportive. We, we have ups and downs, but their spirits are always high. And they always, they believe in what we're doing with uh, taking web three mainstream with entertainment, with video games, with all these successful uh, other incubated projects and integrating the token into it and uh, and beyond. And you can also find those links down in the description. Um, we're coming up uh, on the 35 minute mark here. What can you leave everyone watching with, um, you know, as uh, either words of advice, wisdom, we always like to have our guests, uh, you know, share something with the, with the audience. It can be about the show, whatever, whatever strikes your fancy. And I'll have one follow up to that. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I would say this is that it's very tempting in the as someone who's been in the markets for for crypto area for six years, and who before I even got into Hourglass and anything, I mean, I was semi retired from what I've done in mergers and acquisitions and real estate deals. It's very tempted to get caught in the day to day and to look at things as what's pumping right now, what just happened five minutes ago, right? that that's it's very easy to just look at things from short term and to think that you can you can be the smartest one to ride the daily trend and then get out before the daily trend dies mm, but, i know someone very very tempting but it's the big big money most people that make tons of money in crypto and who've really made it and be gone on to become millionaires and billionaires they have a longer trajectory and they they look at Look at who's actually building. Look at who's actually doing real things. Look at teams. The people are so important. If you have to look at what are the people leading a project and what have they done in the past, what is their track record? Because it's a big indicator of success. If you have people who are successful and are billionaires behind you and that have run lots of projects and have been very successful, their chance of success is going to be astronomically better than people who are anonymous and that ha have some new hot idea with the cool cartoon, you know what I mean? That may yeah. be hot for a day or two. And so in the, if you want to do the, the thing where you're trying to just chase the daily trend, you know, at least start thinking about having another portion uh, of what you're doing dedicated to what is really going to make it in the long term, because that's where the, the, the big returns are. And that, that's where the game changers are. I mean, there's a reason why Ethereum is number number two right now in the market cap, right? And then mm -hmm. and then a lot most meme coin launches go to zero, and and ninety nine percent of what gets launched goes to pretty much nothing, right? Because one one is able to create real world utility, and and you know ultimately sometimes it looks like you're the voting machine is just all that matters, right? As to who's buying, who's buying, who's buying based on hype. But at the end, there's the measuring machine. And there's measured that ETH is the number two, maybe number one someday. And then all like crap coins are zero, right? So just remember at the end, there will be a weighing machine. And so legitimacy matters. 
I think you can have said that any better. I think we, we've worked with dozens of blockchain projects at this point and consulted and advised with them. And, you know, one of the big things that they run into is they come to us and they pitch us, hey, we have the next best, you know, scalable solu- layer two scalability solution for ETH. And you're like, okay, well, who's behind you? Who's backing you? What are your connections? Right. Uh, because half of the concept of you bringing something to the table is also going to be, okay, what type of community can you build? Mm-hmm. How do you drive incentive for developers to come and build on your network and continue to, for it to expand? And so, you know, Ethereum is a perfect example because you have, you know, a layer one that people will trash on maybe the tech that it's slower than a lot of these other new opportunities coming up. But it's Vitalik Buterin and the team, the foundation itself that's been able to uh, build that community that isn't going to go anywhere. The liquidity is there. Developers are going to come. Uh, I think that's very well said. So, Jet, we're getting the, the whole wrap up here. But ultimately, you know, we can't we can't wait for September 7th. We'll be here probably co-living, watching the first uh, episode launch and I think we're more excited to even get involved and uh, work with you guys behind the scenes now definitely absolutely and uh, yeah really excited to keep in touch with you guys we'd love to get you involved in our in our future projects everything that we're doing you guys are amazing and your, your set is beautiful I mean that that looks like a higher budget set than Joe Rogan's using right <laughs> I know right <laughs> probably yes. is yeah, uh, these it, paintings actually the, of themselves are probably worth more yeah not gonna lie you know uh, Sergey down in Miami I'm sorry you know Sergey, the artist down in Miami? No. Uh-huh. Ah, this is his art up here. He's pretty no, that's popular him. in the crypto okay, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Be yeah, sure check him out. Art. Great stuff, man. Just a beautiful human, too. Nice. But uh, that's all we have for you today, guys. Thank you for watching. Like, follow, comment, subscribe. Go check out Jet and the Hourglass Collective and the next crypto gem in the links in the description below. And remember, have a fantastic day. Let us know what you think in the comments. We'll see y'all next time. Crypto Night Out. Crypto Night Out. See y'all later. Later, guys.